Hey, how you doing guys? It's your boy Nisha here and welcome back to another episode of, but this is basically a continuation of my very last video that I made maybe about two, two months ago, maybe three months ago at this point, it was like back in May that I made that initial Rescue Ace video. Once I saw the new support, I knew that this deck would be something special. So I decided like, hey, you know, let's let's see where this can go. And now that it has released here into TCG, there's a lot more that I think you need to know to play this deck successfully. Um, how to break boards, how to make boards, and the terahertz combo. There are two different variants of it. As you can see, I have a 17 card extra deck. And obviously you're not allowed to have 17 cards, but the reason why it's at 17 cards is because I have space for the regular terahertz combo, the one that everyone thought was the only way to play it at first. And then a secondary way to make terahertz that only requires three slots in extra deck. So making this card, which is almost essential, can either require up to seven cards to play properly or three cards to play properly, depending on how you want to use it. And there's a lot of variance in just how you can make and break boards with this deck. Going into my list before we even start, I know you guys are seeing the two prosperity. You're a little confused. It's like, why don't you play three? First off, I'm broke. Second off, I don't think this deck has that many problems with consistency now that Emergency came out. Prosperity is sort of just like that, that extra just in case. And I didn't want to play it at three to like overwhelm because this was sort of built off the theory that we, we have seven cards in our extra deck that we need to play into our main combo. So there will be times where this just won't be able to resolve. And I don't want to get into that situation. This deck is kind of going to get into grind games a lot. And I don't think you should be at a point where you're losing because you gave up too much of your extra deck. Uh, also, you're, you know, I'm sure you saw the elephant in the room, the large ass fucking um, side deck. Originally, I was going to tech in a single copy of Small World because it allowed you to turn any machine into a hydrant or into a turbulence. Basically, you go, you start from any machine you bridge into um, one of your warriors or into one of your ash blossoms, and then you end on any machine. Uh, with small world the same way that you can start with any machine uh, any warrior or you can start with an impulse end on a air hoister because there's no point of having you know going from impulse into impulse you could also search ash blossom or you could use ash ash blossom to search any monster in the deck you're going minus one to resolve this card whereas with emergency going minus one is okay because you're special summoning the monster and it also you emergency has a lot of utility in not only starting and extending your combos but also playing around interruptions it's sort of mandatory it's also searchable air hoister is the only one card combo in the deck hydrant by itself is not a one card combo so small world is way less effective than it used to be because now it's like it's less about having hydrant and something else now it's more about making sure your turbulence can resolve and that's what the whole deck is built around that's why we have the book of moons if they try to imperm or veil or turbulence we book a moon it hopefully it still gets to resolve i mean that's only if they chain to the activation of his effect and not just on summon which could be a proper thing to do i would say because i i do believe um if you want to beat rescue ace you sort of have to you have to make them waste the resources playing around interruptions if you want to be rescue ace. So if they haven't already used the emergency, I think you should book this or you should try to remove this card on summon, not when it activates its effect. You shouldn't try to negate it when it activates. Just do this on summon unless you have something like a speed spell three, like a solemn, you know, counter trap or something. But if you have imperm Valor, don't 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 touch this card. <laughs> not just that we have some ways in our extra deck to help us make sure that turbulence resolves we have the proxy up magician and we have mud dragon of the swamp and basically it's a three card combo or it's not a three card combo like you can make it using your main combo but instead of going into terahertz you take two monsters on field you turn them into proxy f and then you use another monster from hand to make um mud like to fuse with proxy f to make mud dragon 
Then, if you have Turbulence in your hand as well, you get to basically, before you summon Turbulence, you get to resolve Mud Dragon, make it a fire um, attribute monster, and then once it's a fire attribute, then you summon Turbulence, then they're not allowed to target Turbulence with anything. So it's a somewhat good protective play, and it's honestly even better when you can resolve Super Poly on a on a on an opponent's board and make this card. Super Poly is really good in this deck, and if you've seen some of the lists that have been topping locals um, since this deck has come out, a lot of them are running Super Poly because it really helps break boards. Um, those like multi negate boards, so you're going to see this format through um, Adventure Synchron and Visus Turbo, you know, Visus Random Bullshit Turbo. There's going to be a few decks this format that can make like sort of unfair boards and Super Poly can help you play around those. So if you can Super Poly without having to make the Proxy of Magician, it's even better. And they still won't be able to Imperm Veil or touch your Turbulence at all. Um, so, yeah, um, let's get into some of the combos. I have a lot, but I want to go first off terahertz version one. And so this is the version where you use the seven card combo instead of the three card combo. So you start with your air your airlifter, airlifter grabs emergency, and then emergency can get hydrant and tribute airlifter. Now, if you have another rescue ace in hand, it's preferred that you don't tribute your hydrant, I, I mean, that you don't tribute your airlifter, but, um, you know, this is technically a one card combo, so it does still work regardless of if you have another rescue ace in hand or not, but, you know, um, you could make the you can make the combo without using your tur without risking your turbulence, basically, if you have another rescue ace in hand. So now we resolve turbulence, we summon it, and we set four. Now you're probably wondering, like, where does the playing around breaking board part of this start? And this combo is not really to break a board. This is like if you have any two monsters, including hydrant. Um, and you have access to Hydrant and Preventer that hasn't activated its effect this turn. Um, that's basically what this is. This this is where the combo really starts. If you have Hydrant, Turbulence, and Rescue Ace Preventer, then you can pull off the full Terahertz combo. And I think like before when I was um, playtesting with this deck, I was like, man, you really don't need that big of an extra deck. But that was. Um, before I I knew the potential that you could have off of just any two monsters and a kind of like open extra like your your extra deck does not even need to exist for your deck to function so we can play as many cards as we want we can commit as many cards as we like to making sure that a combo works so that's basically what we're doing so we're making Preventer Banishing the Hydrant, then we're linking off the Preventer to summon out the Reprodocus to bring back the Hydrant. And Reprodocus is going to make it a Cybers, and now that we're Cybers, it's a lot easier to Link Climb because, um, as some of you may already know from the days playing against Math Mech and, you know, um, Cyberstorm Axis, like pre Cyberstorm Axis or even post Cyberstorm Axis before the ban list. Um, Math Mech was a fucking menace because uh, a lot of people realize one card link climbs really do make, you know, really are a thing and they really do um, bring the Cybers game to the next level. So the fact that we have access to that with Rescue Ace is uh, nothing short of amazing, really. So it, basically the play here is you get to make Protect Code Talker and then after you make your Tech code talker, you get to make your firewall dragon. Um, I'm pretty sure this thing's supposed to come back. Oh yeah, yeah. So we we made protect code talker without using link decoder. Normally you make protect code Carter using link decoder, but we we made it without using um, 
link decoder and then we linked off into a link four firewall dragon to then have the ability to bring back the link decoder so it can summon itself anywhere and then protect code talker can bring itself back as a quick effect it can banish monsters whose total links equal three so we have to Rapidocus and Link Rebo, so Protect Code Talker gets to come back to our board. And now we have Firewall Dragon with a Co-Link. And the reason why this is actually kind of cool is because if you're, if you want to, you can recycle any monster in your graveyard at this point. You, you don't want to do Hydrant here because you've already set Rescue and you're going to resolve Rescue on your next turn to bring back Hydrant so that both your um, Rescue Ace trap cards are live but you can revive turbulence or rescue Ace preventer here with firewall dragon before you make your link play and then go into neo tempest terahertz now the reason why we're playing terahertz is because it can mill this cybers disaborm and disaborm can banish itself when your opponent activates a spell or trap effect like let's say evenly matched let's say lightning storm harpy's fetter duster um and maybe just spells and traps that you don't like, then you can banish it as long as you control terahertz and negate that effect or negate the activation. And terahertz becomes 5,500 because every time it mills one, it gains 2,500 attack permanently as long as it's face up on the field. Meaning, um, since you mill the disaborm during your turn, during your opponent's turn, you get to mill another one. So before your opponent does anything, you want to bring back Hydrant like frame one so that in case they have anything, you can just resolve your trap cards. Contain is definitely the better of the two because it stops them from not only being able to activate their effect, but also it can't be used as material for Fusion Link Synchro or Xyz. The monster that you target so it's actually kind of goaded in like controlling what your opponent can do extinguish destroys a monster and then if you control hydrant that monster can't use its effects for the rest of the turn so extinguish is is really significant as well um in its own way but i do think contain is the better one of the two because it completely locks down the monster whereas extinguish just gets rid of it right um they summon out a monster. Now we're gonna let them get their emergency, but yeah, that that doesn't really get to resolve. Um, and I, I just want to showcase a scenario where um, Myriagic Aggregator could actually be useful. So let's say they somehow get to a card like Hydrant, where it its effect isn't on summon, but it's an ignition effect. You can activate Neo Tempest Terahertz again, mills, mill your Mariologic Aggregator, and then Aggregator can negate the effect of one face-up card on the field. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even have to negate monsters. It can negate any continuous spell or trap or anything that is an ignition-like effect. Aggregator can deal with it. It's not just monsters, it's spells and traps as well. Um, maybe like cast your rebirth so they don't get to revive something or something of that nature. And then Terahertz comes out to 8,000 attack while they have a monster negate. And you have two more cards that can deal with your potential opponent's um, combos and plays and stop them from being able to play the game while you threaten the game on board. Reminder that this is all off of one card. And I, I get it, you know, this being off of one card doesn't seem like the most broken thing in the world. It seems very fragile to nib and things of that nature, which completely understandable. But it has ways to play around other things like that as well. So we're going to look into version two now. And it has the same start. It's still off of the same card. Either you open airlifter or you open emergency with a rescue ace already in hand. So we're going to set the four and we're going to activate the alert because Hydrant allows us to activate it. We go Link Karibo, we go Preventer, and now this time we go for Binary Sorceress. And the reason why 
this works is because she is a link to Cyber's link monster. And because you already have Link Karibo in Extra Monster Zone, she's not being summoned in a way that stops you from summoning more Link monsters. She basically allows you to um, continue making plays with uh, Preventer and uh, other monsters. And now you get to bring back the Hydrant. And we turn these two into the G Golem Crystal Heart. Now, the reason why we have to use the Link Revo is because it requires two Cybers monsters. But um, there's two really good reasons why we're using Crystal Heart right here. First off, Crystal Heart can revive any Earth Cybers Link monster from our graveyard, meaning Binary Sor Sorceress is actually the perfect target because it is the only Earth Cybers Link monster that that has a generic requirement. Most other um, every other Cybers Earth Link monster that is a Link 2 has a really strict requirement of either Cybers or something of that nature. So we, so Binary Sorceress is the perfect target, and now we have our G Golem Crystal Heart and our Binary Sorceress set up. We get to use Link Karibo, tribute the Hydrant that we bring back off of Preventer, summon it back out, and now 2 plus 2 plus 1, that equals 5. And, you know, it's so funny when I first saw this combo, I wasn't a believer because I was like, wait, isn't isn't like this firewall link six? And it's like, no, that's this one's link five. You're thinking about singularity. So the fact that this works off of either three cards or off of, um, you know, the seven card combo is really great. But the downside to playing it this way is that you don't get the firewall add back of your turbulence or of your, you know, you don't get to choose which one you, you add back to your hand or potentially get rid of one of your opponent's monsters. You kind of just have to sit on Terra Hertz plus Hydrant, which I think is kind of, you know, is it worth the extra space in your extra deck when you're not really doing a lot with that space anyway? That's really up to the play. That's up to you as a player to decide. And so basically, same difference. Um, you guys don't need to see the rest of this, but it's basically the same difference. You have the two interruptions plus the terahertz milling the Mariologic aggregator again. So I have a lot of replays here. I I'm just gonna go through all of them. Um, let's just see Rick playing through Nib, playing through interruptions. Let's just see all of them. So my friend here started playing or started messing around with some of the Unchained stuff and we just bricked really hard, um, which this wouldn't be a bad hand going second because you would get the impulse effect. And then once you get impulse, you can get um, fire engine, fire engine, summon out your um, hydrant or your airlifter and, you know, get you your get you to the start of your combo. But um, I started to main Cosmic against this Unchained deck because uh, they would oftentimes set a card and then um, activate one of their Unchained monsters to, to destroy the set card to start their combo. So I figured Cosmic Cyclone is one of the best cards I can use against a deck like this. And I was right. And they have the Sunny Snitch. I Ash Blossom that, so they just set one pass. And still, I have nothing. Now, unfortunately for me, um, he, like, at this point, we've already played a few games, so he was smart enough not to resolve this Unchained Souls effect on Summon to pop a card on my field, because then I would have been able to resolve Impulse and get me another monster. Um, so, thankfully, that's not what happened. But even if I did resolve Impulse here, um, this doesn't target, so he probably would have just gotten rid of my monster anyway but it, trust me this is the better alternative for him because now it's like I still have no rescue ace monster in my graveyard so he just attacks and now he gets to start his unchained combo and I had to do it during main phase two so that he doesn't play into this impulse and potentially 
lose out, uh, you know, um, power plays because he, you know, let me summon out an extra monster. But he, he got himself into a decently good situation. I do think he could have played this better because he could have um, got the Sh Shiyama into the grave and then use Shiyama effect to destroy his face down and then continue extending his, instead of sending one of these other monsters to make his unchained abomination. But what's done is done, right? So now we're going to start here with Rescue's Preventer. And on Preventer Summon, we drew Fire Attacker, so we're going to resolve Fire Attacker. And now we have two Rescue Ace monsters on field, which I linked them both off into Proxy of Magician because if I was able to make a Mud Dragon of the Swamp against Unchained, they would have no chance of dealing with my Turbulence because then it would never be able to be targeted by anything. So because I sent Preventer, Preventer will be able to revive the impulse. So now we're going to use Proxy F. And at that point, he uses Escape of the Unchained to get rid of my Proxy F Magician so that I don't get the Fusion Summon. I thought it was Field in Hand. It's only monsters on Field. Never mind. This card's kind of flushed. All right, so he uses Abomination here, and that I think was a bad decision on his part because now Impulse does get to activate. Or does it? Am I missing something here? Did I not resolve Impulse for some reason? Oh, that's what happened. Okay, this is actually really interesting. It's really good that I'm showing this. Um, He chain blocked his unchained Abomination. He made... Um, Abomination chain link one and he made his his um other unchained monster chain link two or yeah he, he made the link monsters effect chain link two so if a monster you control is destroyed by card effect you can banish this card especially on the fiend monster right and these are both re reactive effects so these are like both trigger effects and all he did was like pick which one went first which one went second but by doing that, he unironically big brained against my impulse because impulse, although it says it's a quick effect, it does have to do because it says when at the start of it, it has to directly chain to your opponent's monster effect on field. Meaning if they are able to chain block their monster effect, you should not be able to resolve impulse. According to um, TCG, uh, SCGOC, if you guys know what that term is, it's like the sequence of chain links. Um, basically, turn priority allows the, the turn player to pick their um, trigger effects first, and then it shifts over to the opponent. They get to pick their trigger effects, and then it shifts back to the turn player to do any quick effects, and then it shifts back to the opponent to like quick effects are like one by one. It's not like you can't stack multiple quick effects. So all that to say that you can chain block impulses tributing effect. Um, so because it because it has one at, at the start of it, meaning that this card, although it is an amazing card, is not perfect um, by any means. So chain blocked my impulse. And now my only play was to make turbulence, but he had pretty much sacrificed all his steam to get rid of my impulse. And now I can turbulence set four, go into battle phase, get rid of his abomination so that I don't have to worry about it during um, my opponents, you know, during my end phase, him destroying stuff. And this card has no protection at all. So I just decided let's just crash and see what else he has for me next turn. Go for the emergency. And the reason why I went for the emergency here is so I can go into preventer um, during like draw phase or standby phase and then tribute the preventer to summon back my impulse so that both my extinguish and my contain are live. So he swings into me again. I activate the contain so that he's, he's not able to attack. He resolves dark hole and he summons back his Unchained Soul. 
And so what I did here is I was sort of at a sort of at a like conundrum where this card doesn't target. I only have rescue and I have the extinguish. If I resolve the rescue, I get to bring back turbulence and he could pop the turbulence. But if I don't resolve the rescue, there is a 50% chance that he hits it and I have no play for next turn. So um, it's entirely up to him which card on the field that he wants to destroy. And he, ch cho he chooses the turbulence, right? So thanks to emergency, I get to reset contain. Set one with the Book of Moon. And we take the 3k directly, because I'm not going to waste my Book of Moon when it can be really useful. And I get the best top deck in, <laughs> in the game. Um, not, not even going to hold you. Go into Airlifter. He has to imperm, we have the Book of Moon. Now he has the Unchained Trap card here. But I was able to search Alert, and I almost forgot that Alert's first effect was the ability to revive, no, not revive, to add back Rescue Oasis from the graveyard. So if you don't set this off your initial turbulence because you don't control Hydrant, it's a really good late game card. We go for Preventer here and we attack into it because I had a feeling he would um, attempt to destroy my Preventer with one of his card effects. And we use Contain here to stop it from being able to use his effects. Um, it can attack, so it can't um, crash into me to get itself to summon. And we go for Code Virus Swordsman just to get Preventer off board. Bring back our Turbulence. Turbulence, we set the Emergency from deck. And they just scoop from there. Um, I guess it's because they didn't have enough... Um, I guess they just didn't have enough steam to keep going. They did have one more of the Unchained Soul, but they probably didn't have any more copies in deck, meaning they wouldn't be able to discard to get the pop, and they would just be stuck um, only having one monster to use at a time. So maybe he scooped a little preemptively, maybe he could have won that game, but you know, um, we take those, I guess. Uh, play through Nib. Let's let's see what this replay is. So we we take point and we opened up Airlifter with you know a, a hefty number of rescue aces in our hand. And this is like if you have emergency, this is never a bad thing. Um, in my personal opinion, because now like all it means is that like half the like impulse is like an extra hand trap like I consider this card both a hand trap and um, and a board breaker at the same time it's it's like it's really good at being both um, not the best at either but good at both you, you, you know what I'm saying so we get to hydrant and he doesn't ash to hydrant for some reason which is I, I'm a little curious about like he didn't ash emergency and he didn't ash hydrant I think he's really concerned about the turbulence, or maybe he's saving the ashes for our potential plays after we do turbulence, but um, yeah, I honestly should have just went for the terahertz combo here before going into turbulence, but I'm really glad that I didn't because by me playing this turbulence and then setting four. I went to Link Karibo, going to Preventer. And now I was going to start the Terahertz combo, but he nipped me when I had Preventer on board. So I'm like, fuck, what can I actually do? I go Rescue because I didn't resolve Hydrant's effect here to go for uh, uh, the alert. So I decided, let me just use Rescue and go for this uh, Airlifter. So. And this time I attempt to go for the Cybers combo. Quickly learning that I did it the complete wrong way. And I don't have any ability to make terahertz because it, it requires three Cybers monsters, not just two. 
even though it's a link five. So, I mean, if it, it required two Cyrus monsters, I would have been able to make it right here, but because it requires, because it does require three and I don't have Link Karibo or the Link Decoder on my board, I basically played myself into not being able to make the card unless um, I can go for like Amirage or Proxy of Magician or something. So I left Firewall and Protect Code on field because I'm like, you know, fuck it, it's an interruption, I guess. And I do still have um, this impulse in hand. So if he does activate anything, um, any of his monster effects, like if he starts off with like a, you know, life twin normal summon or one of his unchained monsters, I'd be able to summon a fire engine or something from deck and be able to continue playing even on my opponent's turn on top of the firewall bounce. So I go for Sun Sunny Snitch, Abomination's Prison to search for Trap. He goes, Cerama, and I guess he was kind of mad that I uh, made a play around uh, Nibiru. I do remember him being mad that I played around Nibiru, and also he forgot that Abomination's Prison isn't an Unchained card. It's just part of the engine, but it, it doesn't have Unchained in the name, so you can't reset it with the Cerama. Cerama. But, um... Honestly, I don't think there was a way he could have won that game. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? He did have Ash. So there there was a way that he could have won. But I don't know if it... But, yeah. Anyway, um... Here's our opponent going first. And, um... I was really like I was really bashful about like resolving impulse as soon as possible because um, if I would have resolved or if impulse would have resolved here I would have summoned fire engine and then Kisa kill would have summoned the Leela from deck and then because he just summoned the Leela fire engine would have summoned like airlifter I, I could have gotten another copy of emergency or I could have gotten a copy of headquarters but uh, fortunately none of that happened so all I get is him getting to make his board kind of in kind of uninterrupted because I have no other interaction for the turn which is great I do think he messes up a bit here though um, his unchained combos were still um, fresh at this point so like uh, for some reason, he did not bring back the Leela uh, to pop his own like unchained or his own unchained trap card to get another summon off of it, which was one thing that I was a little confused by. But just looking at his board now, look at how many interruptions he has. So he has Soul of Rage, he has Escape, he has Imperm, and he has a pop in the grave. On top of, um, I think that's it. Like it's just four, four interruptions, I believe. So we start with impulse here. So we, we normal out impulse and we target this soul of rage or we, we, we don't target. We, we resolve impulse on the soul of rage so that it doesn't get to activate its effect. Because it can only use on special summon monsters. So he has one of two choices. He can either imperm this, um, he can Kisa kill this, or he can just let it go through. He decided for some reason to let it go through. I think it's because he had a Escape of the Unchained plus King Yama. Where so um, basically he could pop his own Soul of Rage, add something back to hand, and then use King Yama because it was destroyed to summon it back out and its effects would still be live. So, because he um, pre, you know, preemptively used Kisakil here to get his um, Leela back on board, I decided to trigger off Impulse like ASAP because I was like, wait a minute, he's gonna special summon a monster. Let me at least get to Fire Engine. 
So he gets to summon out the Leela, and now he's going to use his Leela to destroy his own escape of the Unchained. And at that point, I'm like, is he sure he made the right play? Because, you know, he could have uh, destroyed something that I, you know, the fire engine I just made, I guess. But he, he, he wants to summon out an, another Unchained monster. And then he chains his own Escape of the Unchained to get rid of both his monster and my fire engine. Which goes off. Hydrant gets summoned. And then Soul of Rage activates. King Yama activates. And then Soul of Rage, he tries to swallow up my Hydrant to go for a Link Summon. Which is why Soul of Rage is an interruption, because it basically gets to... Um... What's a good example of this? It basically gets to swallow your monster and use it for a link, and that link could be either one of the Unchained links, it could be a Topologic Trisbania, it could be a Nightmare Unicorn. There's a lot that he can go into using Soul of Rage. So what I do here is I opt to use Emergency. And the funny thing about Emergency is that it doesn't restrict you from summoning the monster that you already control or that you already tributed. Like you can't tribute a monster with like a different, like it doesn't say to tribute a monster with like a different name because it summons a monster first and then you tribute. Meaning you could summon another copy of the, of Hydrant and get Hydrant to activate its effect. So he keys the kills. I get Hydrant here. He does have the imperm, which again, he could have impermed it, but he was waiting for, I guess, the turbulence because he didn't want to risk imperming too early and then turbulence still being in my hand when I had four cards, which it was. Or which it wasn't when I activated Hydrant. But now you're going to see why we play the Book of Moons. So now I'm able to set four cards. I get the alert going to Preventer. And at this point, I'm. I was going to go into the terahertz combo, which I don't believe he would have had a solid answer for, even though he was at 8,000 life points and still had the ability to to somewhat play the game. I don't think he would have recovered from the terahertz play because I would have gotten a bounce of firewall and then a bounce of regular firewall and then a attacking into um, one of his monsters with. Um, and this is another hand where I drew uh, nothing but ways to play around negates. And I think like this is one of the best things about modern Yu-Gi-Oh is that like learning how to play around negates is like the ultimate like s I don't even want to say skill ceiling, but it's so necessary to know how to play competitively. To know how to play around negate like learning how to play around negates is so important. Now, sadly, um I was able to get fire engine on it uh, on my, on my board during my opponent's turn to get airlifter but again because his unchained soul does not target he got to destroy my airlifter before it was able to resolve its effect so um i i just kind of had to hold that l and now he's going to be able to make even more plays and he gets to make uh his soul disaster here to make an unchained linked swallowing up my monster again you know a lot of these unchained cards do that and this is really helpful for him breaking a board too like this shouldn't be able to resolve on your first turn but because i'm playing rescue ace it did and it helped them significantly so and here he gets to make the um one of the reasons why I think Unchained has a chance this format is because it has the ability to make Wave High King Caesar. And this card is has a non-once-per-turn effect to negate any effect that, in, that includes special summoning a monster. This means activating um, Rite of Aramisir because it summons a token. This means Nibiru. This means a lot of things that could potentially start combos. Now, of course, it doesn't stop Fenrir because Fenrir is a built-in summon and not an activated effect that summons. Same thing for like Kurikara or, you know, um, really good going second cards. But 
it could stop a lot of combos from starting simply because it negates it twice. And as you can see, I don't just have the one for one, I have the emergency and both of these would be useless if I were to activate both. Um, it, like he would be able to negate both in the same turn. So thankfully I drew the Book of Moon, which not only stops us from getting negated by stuff like Imperm, but also can help us break boards like this one. So we start with the airlifter. Um, there's no imperm here, which is great. So I'm like, okay, let me just get headquarters so I can normal summon the Hydra instead of special summoning it. And so that Soul of Rage doesn't really get to do much during, um, during my turn or during this turn. So I resolve headquarters. He summons back his unchained soul and he uses that to destroy my field spells so that I don't get the attack raise. And I'm like, okay, well now it's all or nothing. I have to get rid of this High King Caesar, or at least get, get away for it to not use his effect. And this, this I kind of goofed because I didn't realize when I read Impulse that it targets a monster with the highest attack. So his Soul of Rage was somewhat protected by this effect. And I was like, damn, he sort of like didn't play into my my impulse here. But the, then I decided like, wait a minute, let me just go for this one for one anyway, right? Like we used the Hydra in hand to make a Hydra from deck. And that's because when we control impulse, Hydra can't be targeted, meaning Unchained kind of just can't touch the Hydra. And now that we can't touch the hydrant, we can um, we can resolve impulse here, tribute it. And when we resolved impulse, I think he could have used his trap card to com to to get rid of it complete to get rid of hydrant completely, but that would not have done much for him, I don't believe. So now he does escape with the unchained. He pops both. He gets the king yama. And I just get to Hydrant for another Turbulence. It's great. I love <laughs> I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh sometimes. I do think he played that a little wrong. Like, I, I do think um, he should have gotten rid of my Hydrant after seeing that, like, I could fucking... That, that I no longer had another Rescue Ace monster on field. But the fact that he left it on board meant that I got to search another Turbulence and now we're gaming. We set four, we go for the alert. It's like, <sighs> and I remember he was so mad because he's like, man, I had like four fucking interruptions and you play through every single one of them. And I was like, yeah. And that was like minus one card in hand because I think this was, what was this still where he started with the Ash Blossom on the impulse I no no it, it wasn't that that was last duel uh we did get the fire engine but the fire engine didn't do anything because it was gone before our turn even started so technically our impulse during their turn just gave them more steam to make more plays because they were able to make more links using our monsters so we broke a four interruption board with five cars in hand and I think that is really great because it, it really only worked because we were able to get rid of this King High Caesar. All of their other, all of Unchained's other effects, most of them can be mitigated by having Hydrant with another monster on, for, uh, on board because they can't target the Hydrant. But uh, Wave King High Caesar really doesn't care. Um, if you're playing any sort of adventure synchron deck really be careful about this card the only thing that really beats it is like revolution synchron into a black rose or a black rose moonlight so yeah just just be really careful about facing this card when your opponent plays unchained or something but i think uh I think that's everything that I wanted to show you, everything that was cool. I think this was like the one time we actually was able to do the terahertz combo in a in an actual duel. And did I go first here? Yes. Okay. So we can show off the terahertz combo in like an actual duel this time, I guess. So 
So we go for decoder and we go for turbulence here. Protect code talker, bring back this firewall, bring back the protect code, link into terahertz, mill the cyber disaborm, and now we have rescue for next turn. We also have three hand traps, so this is pretty stacked. This is like terahertz combo at its greatest. And their hand is like, they can't really do much other than like use Aruha as like a follow up play, but imperming on the dark fluid, like I'm not gonna negate that. He really thought I was gonna negate this and I'm like, why, why would I negate this imperm? It doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, Sunny Snitch had no chance of resolving. So his best play was normal summon Sarama pop with Aruha, but then I would have Ash Blossomed the... Actually, you know what? As a matter of fact, I would have wasted Ash Blossom on the Sunny Snitch, but he would have already used his normal summon. No, but he didn't already use his normal summon, so I would have had... I would have had to got to, to get creative, right? So I would have had to rescue and then extinguish after that. That's what I would have had to do. And I still, actually, you know what? I had the Cyber Disaborm, so actually Sunny Snitch couldn't do anything. I Disaborm the Sunny Snitch and I Ash Blossom the Aruha S S Sarama combo. Um, and I Veil or anything else that comes out that could potentially hurt me. I could also just emergency for like a preventer or something on top of rescue. So terahertz combo is really good. And the reason why I'm advertising this terahertz combo so much is because um, I saw someone post in the rescue ace Facebook group, right? I know Facebook sort of a joke is really good for you. Facebook's a great platform if you want to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh! And they, they said, st Statistically, the terahertz combo was their most successful variant. And now, after playtesting with it, like after hearing that and playtesting with terahertz for myself, I can understand why. Because you really don't have to go into terahertz for the deck to be good. Rescue Ace has such amazing grit with just its main deck that the extra deck is kind of, you can put whatever the, the fuck you want in the extra deck. But the fact that you have so much space, you can make so many potential plays. And the fact that the Terahertz combo really only requires two monsters to start that could be made off of one card, off of one airlifter, or off of one emergency is kind of great. You have to understand that, like, Cash Jira, Runic is still running around, Sprite's still running around. And there's, it's a really diverse format. So I don't think anything is going to stand out on top. This deck is going to go under the radar, at least not under the radar, but like kind of like not in the top tables for a few months. And then maybe like post age of overlord where this deck has extra starters with like the evil eyes, uh, not evil eye, the snake eye stuff. Then maybe this deck will be a stronger contender and it might they might consider hitting it but at the moment i think it's a safe investment because i think it's going to be playable for at least to at least till the end of the year it won't be like broken broken until age of overlord i think right now it's a really good foundation there are a few flaws with the deck but i think ultimately they can all be mitigated by um by just fixing around your extra deck and and your side deck and not it's sort of like not letting yourself fall into those like gimmicky cards. Um, I think Polly is a great side deck. Judgment's a great side deck. Uh, Dimensional Barriers, great side deck. Cosmic, great side deck. And Droll, maybe. Either Droll or the two Kaijus and the Reinforce. I think those, I think that might be the best side deck lineup out of everything here. Um, Dark Ruler could help, but you aren't really breaking boards unless you make access code and you could make access code with the terahertz combo that's way more than possible because you know you go into the firewall and you have both the protect code talker and the link decoder on board and i guess that's only one pop but that's one pop plus a bounce from firewall so not the worst situation in the world 
Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been your boy Nistro, signing out. Um, next is going to be Infernoble, and dude, that deck has so many routes. It's man, it's going to take me even longer to figure out how exactly I should go from there. I do have Adventure Synchron um, also on the way. I know it wasn't on the voting poll that I put up on the community post, but I started messing around with it. I have a few dueling book replays of it, so I'm going to show you guys those. And hopefully you guys can get some insight on how Adventure Synchron works and why the deck might be one of the best decks of the year. So this has been your boy Nistro here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Signing out.